Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Julia Ziga. I'll be your host today. And I guarantee you today we will have a blast because I have an amazing guest for you here today. His name is Nicolas Castel from Spain. Welcome, Nicolas. Can you introduce yourself in Spanish right now? Hola, muchas gracias por recibirme. Soy Nicolas y encantado de estar aquí. <laughs> okay, okay. What did you just say? You said hello. Uh, I just say um, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm Nicolas Castel, and thank you. It's like yeah. well, thank yeah. you for being here today. Um, just one thing before you, we plunge into your beautiful art. Everybody who's watching right now this live stream, come over to behands.net/live because that's where the chat is. That's where you can all your, uh, ask all your questions that I will tell Nicolas later, and that's also where our community is, which I want to say hello to right now. Hello, Angus. Hello, Andreas. Uh, there's Gareth, Oliver, uh, people are already tuning in. This is lovely. So, um, Nicolas, maybe you want to tell us a little bit about you and what you do and what you're going to plan, I have planned for today. Well, I'm an illustrator um, from 10 years of experience, at least mm. professionally. Uh, if we don't talk, uh, if, you, if we don't count the four years of the university, right? They count. Um, it can, all right, so 14 <laughs> or maybe all the life. And right. I work uh, mainly with um, um, advertising and editorial work. Um, and also um, right now at the moment, uh, most of my time I spend it with uh, comics. I do, yes. I'm doing a webtoon uh, comic with the editorial uh, Dupuis from Belgium. That is and cool. It, Yes, uh, that, that tune actually means that people can uh, follow how you are drawing the story along. Is that right? Yes, definitely. And it's online in webtoonfactory.com. It's it's a weekly basis publishing. Um, okay. Every every week we have a new chapter. That is cool. Uh, yeah, that is fantastic. I'm very happy for it because I'm writing the story and drawing the story as well. So it's very exciting. Yes. So do, um, do people actually have a vote in how the story is going to, uh, you know, progress or is it just you? Uh, well, yeah, obviously they can put some feedback and I can consider it. Um, That's even yeah, cooler but... than Netflix, I think. <laughs> yeah, interesting, <laughs> interesting, yeah. I already published some graphic novels like this one. It's called Borges. Uh, and it's in it's in French and in Spanish. Unfortunately, it's not yet in English. But uh, yeah, it's a it's the story of an Argentinian writer. It's called that is called Jorge Luis Borges. Mm -hmm. um, he is a very important writer in the Spanish uh, literature. Um, yeah, but I've been working as an illustrator for the Sunday Times, Washington wow. Post. Um, for Adobe once we did something and also for Mercedes-Benz China and other, other uh, Shiseido um, I don't know uh, that is very impressive yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't surprise me when I look at your beautiful art I'm not surprised that you have so many cool clients and all the, by the way the chat is saying hola Nicolas hola 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 hola, hola. <laughs> So cool. So maybe you can uh, share your screen with us and we can take a look at your work, actually, because you know, people have an idea now. You have been working for 14 years. You know what you're talking about. Maybe we can take a look at your beautiful artwork. OK, definitely. I think it's sharing at the moment, right? OK. Uh, um, Tony? Can yeah, you today, we, today we have Tony behind the scenes. So he's, yes. uh, he's pulling the strings for us today. It's sharing. It's OK, sharing. All right, go all right. for it. So this is the piece that we are going to work today. It's um, lovely. I, I prepared this uh, for, it's half a way through, all right? 
uh, we have the color uh, in in planes, which is uh, my main technique because I put special emphasis in the in the line work in my in all my work. Yes. Because uh, I I actually uh, did uh, till I was 22, 23, I I was afraid from color and uh, all my work <laughs> it used to be in black and white. So that that um, that tendency um, uh, happened to to affect my my focus in in line work and i enjoy drawing and i enjoy shapes and and describing all the things in just lines right but later i discovered um, how to play with colors in in a special in a special in a special minimal way through the 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 paintings by the the japanese ukiyo e and yes Hiroshige, uh, Hokusai, and I thought, wait a second, this is a fantastic idea because they they put so much emphasis in the line work and describing the things with with lines, but the colors are are just a few uh, selections. By but especially especially thought, right? They they are special colors that work, right. and even if you have three, four, five colors, they work well because they spend so much time on the decision of which colors should exactly. I put on the piece, right? So I, I decided to study in depth all the work by the Japanese and apply, oh, that's apply to, to my technique. And I've been doing this technique for eight years or more. I don't know. That's amazing. And uh, the, the limitation of the colors also comes from the process they've been working with because the prints back then, they were woodblock prints, right? So that's they were right. actually applying one color on one block of uh, wood printed on the paper and then the next so you wouldn't be painting or, or like a brush you were pressing it into the paper so yeah that's cool that you adapted that's right. that and it's very important to to stop for a second and and don't do like um because it's super fun for example when you are a beginner to to do a a, a very very detailed line work and also uh, get excited and maybe doing a matte painting style with many textures here and strokes there and <laughs> what what is going to happen is that your piece it's not going to be readable it's not mm -hmm. going to be understandable for the public it's going to be a mess and you want to to be to to create something that it's readable um yeah. that Simplicity. brings yes a uh, peaceful and um and um, that people can stop for a second and, and understand uh, all the flows and the composition and everything. So I love it's important. It's important to make a decision. If you if you enjoy more drawing, then you have to to obviously care about the colors. But maybe a minimal way to a minimal technique on colors would work best for you. But if you enjoy more doing the colors and you are more a painter than a, an, illust an illustrator, or a, a, what do you call it, like draftman, a, a, a line work guy, maybe, maybe use less lines and maybe paint more and, and like the impressionists right. uh, that they, they did everything without lines. So that's right. an important decision. Find for, your own balance, yes. Yeah, yeah, for the, the students that uh, maybe they... They are watching us. Yeah, uh, <laughs> small. It's, it's an important decision as a as a creator. Yeah. Anyway, so I prepared. Uh, so we we will work on the la lights and the lights here because lights are going to come from. Uh, let's use here. Lights are going to come from this area and they will project here. Ah, from, they're coming from underneath the water. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I, I want to paint this piece and hopefully finish it in the in the session. But let's see if, if we are lucky. But uh, I prepare a small video uh, of right. eight eight minutes, for, more or less, to that that is actually here. Uh, we can we can see part of the line work and all the piece from from colors to the end. So you can you can get an idea of how I work. So, yeah, go so. for it. 
So yeah, this is actually a piece that is from um, current project that I have still to finish. It's a board frame by a Japanese um, company. Oh, awesome. The Japanese company is called uh, Tanuki Games. Um, mm -hmm. And I have to do many, many illustrations for for the for all the cards it's a, a game that that's a lot of work right cards. yeah 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 it's like 40 42 cards or more or less and each each card has has a different uh, composition a different different characters and everything so do you start in photoshop or do you start on piece uh, paper and with a pencil ah uh, for many years uh, i started with the uh, with a pencil and paper, uh, mm -hmm. you can see many in my Behance uh, portfolio. You can see many many projects that they have uh, paper paper pieces uh, um, with the with the pencils and everything, and also with the with the inking, with the nibs and the the tips with the the, the nibs. You know, mm -hmm. traditional style, right? Yes. Style. But since I got this this little baby, the Cintiq what is that? The, the Cintiq? Oh, wow, cool! Yeah, twenty four <laughs> pro. Um, yeah, I felt in love, and it, it's so so much faster, right? So it's a it's a good investment. It's a good investment, even if it's a, a bit expensive. So now you can see that I'm caring about big planes, big planes in the piece. It's important to uh, for your mind to to full uh, to feel to feel a, 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 every every big area with color and make these decis decisions first mm -hmm. come uh, first from general to particular all right from big to small yes from big to small because otherwise it's going it's going to be very stressful for you and yeah. you you will it's it's like a puzzle for many times i i think uh, about creating a piece like uh, i'm doing a small path puzzle right and you have to care uh, uh, first from the big areas and then order um, order them and then go for the particular details. Um, now, I, so I also have the tendency to, to go into the little details because they're more fun to whittle around. But you are right. If you want to uh, reach mm -hmm. the goal of the illustration, you better start from big and then work your, small, mm -hmm. work your way smaller into the details. And I can give you some feedback from the chat. Sandrine says beautiful illustrations, and they're also intrigued by your Spanish UI of Photoshop. They've never seen that before, and oh, yeah. they, they also Sorry like that. that. They also <laughs> like that you had a fan in your video, and it, it, it seems oh, yeah. warm the, to them. The, the, the fan is because it's uh, in Spain, and you can see that it's actually during the day. But we have to put the the um, you know the curtains there from the from the from yeah, here the window because blinds. it's it's unbearable the heat is unbearable in granada in the, in the oh summer. tell me about no. it you know how cold it is right here and everybody else i know <laughs> is freezing too so yeah <laughs> no pity sorry <laughs> so uh before we continue with this i like to talk a little bit of um the decision here you can <laughs> see that we have cold backgrounds yeah uh yeah. cold colors like this blue and this is also blue and here we have the contrast of a complementary color which is this magenta and this uh, why this is interesting because it's a complementary color and pops it helps to pop out the the figure but it's it's like a magic magical thing even if it's pop out it's it works because it's it's science. It's a complementary. It's it comes directly from the from from the other extreme of the color scheme that Great. we can we can see here. No, wait a second. Yeah, here for example, we we have this color and and we go to here, right? Exactly. So it's very important to to understand the chromatic cycle to. To use use these combinations um, and also to to care about harmonies, right? So, be, if we have some colors like this, um, it will work if you if we use also colors like this. But if you if you have a big area of these colors and you put a green or a yellow, it's not gonna be balanced. Mm -hmm. So um it's very very interesting for the students uh, and even in art we are all students actually um i am always learning something new so um 
it's very interesting to to play with this and and care about the the big parts of the picture, the big planes and the big um, the the big color areas and make the decisions and play play with the the color schemes and see what what feels good, what feels uh, uh, bad, what feels uh, interesting, what feels warm, what feels cold, and complementary colors. It's super 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 useful. My my specialty. <laughs> <laughs> Let's continue. Ang Angus started. just said that uh, the tiger's leaf shapes mirror the shape of the tree leaf forms. Can you repeat? What do you mean? Uh, Angus said the tiger's leaf shapes, the tiger on your. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. What this, this leaves, the shape, the overall shape of the leaves mirror the shape of the tree leaf form. Ah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Yeah. Oh, you did sometimes, that. So, sometimes you, I work and I, and it, it, it goes like this and it's intuition some, yeah 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 and then somebody say oh but that that uh, resembles that and this and that and I say oh wait a second it's true that, yeah right it's, <laughs> it's just in, in, intuition yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, and colors are very personal colors comes from from emotion so totally. even if uh, right. it's interesting to to pay attention for the theory it's also important to to let you feel free and and experience and right um put the the colors that that you feel like to right for right. example i remember that i used to have a illustrator friend that she was very into she was very gloomy she was very nostalgic and all the all her pieces were with the with the pastel colors you know mm -hmm. because pastel colors when Soft you put colors. more white to the to the color it looks more nostalgic more more Desaturated, uh, sad, smooth, gentle, yeah, calm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There, there's some common ground when it comes to color. Blue uh, always feels cold to everybody, or in you know, lets us mm -hmm. tell that something is in the distance. But how someone feels about that is always personal and comes Definitely. up to the. You can't control that, but it's That's fun to sure. play with. That's it. for sure, and, and it's the beauty of uh, of art that you can. I always say that uh, with a piece, if you are very, very, if you if you stop uh, some time and you understand you for studying the piece with very uh, with attention and you have a knowledge, you can sense the personality of the, of yes, the right. artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For it's sure. very interesting. And here's an interesting comment by Sandrine. She said, there's a Pompoko reference in your image. These two guys in the background in the suits, they look like tanukis in disguise. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about the Ghibli movies before we went live. So yeah, yeah, I yeah, already yeah, know yeah. that. <laughs> Nicola That's loves true. it too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Now I'm stopping the video because now it's almost the, the end. And I like to, um, to paint the lines too. Because when, when I paint the line of the, of the picture, Ah. And it, and it's a very tricky technique. It it took me some years to more or less master it because um, if you put some uh, many colors on the lines, it's gonna be distracting. Mm -hmm. But if if you colors with maybe two or three tones, it can it can put the the picture even more harmonic, even more you know uh, coherent. Yes. Um, it's very interesting too. So I'm I'm coloring this part because I'm I'm adding some magical effect to the dancer here, just to to make it more in mysterious. Um, yes. And adding the stars. So. And you're working with gradients too a lot. Mm, yeah, gradients are very very useful. Very useful for. But they're, know, they're very subtle and it really reminds me of the woodblock prints back then when they only had a little sponge to apply the, the color and mm -hmm. blend it into each other. So yeah, it's, it's really subtle. Yeah, yeah. And you can see here in the, in the end of the dress that it's also almost the complementary color. If I yeah. put here a green, a green, it's going to be look disgusting. It's not gonna <laughs> but, right. uh, but if I use this tone, it's, it looks like, um, uh, I don't know, like, that it's silk with a special effect. Mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, just the, the final part of the piece, uh, putting more uh, gradients here and there just to 
to make it it's not exactly volume but it's like an Ill illusion of volume sometimes um, you just applied this this uh, blue color to the line work in the background which really pushed it into the into the distance into it's interesting the distance. Effect. Yeah. yeah yeah very useful mm -hmm. it's lovely too it's beautiful oh thank you and uh, the the um this pattern on the ground is that her shadow there yeah that's interesting yeah. that's a cool idea Yeah, with the with this game, the 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 company told me that it's important in because it's part of the game and it, it's gonna be a a part of the the board game to to sense some magical uh, animals or some some special details in in each card. So they told me you have to put a, an animal uh, in every piece, but it it has to ah. be hidden so here there is a fish, yes, a fish the right. tiger yeah yeah let's see let's see how how it looks uh, the final the final board game i hope it's people are gonna like it i hope and they there. send you one mm -hmm. what sorry so there's a question from luca and right. luca wants to know may i ask nicolas what helped him to improve and handle the composition of a piece so well mm. That's a very interesting question. Um, obviously practice, but uh, I will say that it's very important to analyze uh, pictures in general. Um, mm. It's very important to, to care about the, the museums, exhibitions. If there is an opening of a exhibition, go there in your city, go visit, support art. Even if we are illust illustrators, right? Of course, it's, uh, I uh, uh, myself as an illustrator, I it's a visual I art. Have, I have uh, more than 30, 30 exhibitions, but um, wow, it's important to to participate with um, with the gallery communities because um, it's a, it's part of the crowd, and you you go there. Um, maybe maybe you don't feel anything for any picture. But uh, if you do, if you, if you find a picture or a poster or anything, but you find that picture interesting, stop for a second, analyze it. What yes. is the, the movement here? In a, in, here we have a, you, you can see my mouse when I, when I scroll it around, right? Uh, uh, or not? I uh, don't. All oh, right, sorry. So we, we, we see here a, a composition in, in dia the diagonal. Yeah, that's the correct pronunciation but um, also uh, it's it's also interesting if if the, you see if you notice the curve the the curve that the the rhythm of the hand with the special effect here um, creates and if you see the the face of the tiger and just, the other just one face, question because are you drawing right now no 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 i'm not drawing i'm just okay. uh, i'm just describing the okay thing. um so you you have to use um a strong rhythm like a diagonal and then if you if you are lucky and you you can manage to do it um it's interesting if you also create a circle rhythm that the eyes can can Follow. flow uh, around the piece with a spe a specific elements like in this case, the hands helps that rhythm and also the face of the tigers. So, mm -hmm. so the reader can go with the hand and then, oh, there is a tiger here and another, and another tiger here. And then it comes the other hand again. And then it goes. And because now we, we, we live in a, in a point of the, of the society, of the society that uh, uh, an average person consumes 38,000 images per day. Something like this, I read in an article. It's huge. No, it's so a lot. If you can, if you can with your illustration, um, hook the attention of the reader at least for three or six seconds, that's a huge success. So <laughs> yes. yeah. So if you if you happen to to do a, a strong a strong rhythm like a diagonal or something like this, and then add a a, a cycle. Cycle rhythm typically like I'm, I'm trying to describe now. 
it, it will help your your career in general because your art is going to be noticed. Mm -hmm. and that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you achieve that by being able to control all the compositional parts in the picture, but color, uh, form, but, shape, rhythm. But it's not something that I super decide. I'm, I will lie if I if I tell you that I decided like mathematically. I yeah. just draw how how it looks like in my mind, and then maybe I I trigger this, trigger that, and and do some tricks. But it's it's not super. It's not super mathematical. Yeah, I would guess it's it's, it's a balance between yeah. intuition and your own preferences and knowledge yeah. about the arts. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so and go to exhibitions and uh, analyze beautiful paintings yeah. or posters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And experience and play, play with your pieces and right. and practice all, all, all that you can. I think that's a great advice. Just try it, see how, how it looks to you and what it feels to you. And then you will actually build up your experience mm -hmm. about how composition works. Yeah. And also it's very interesting to, to experience uh, for composition um, in fine arts well, I did a, a special course with um, uh, photographs in black and white you know mm -hmm. with the the old cameras yes and that I, I have to say that uh, that helped me that helped me pretty pretty good yeah, and also well. ties into what you said earlier, even if you're not into art, you're an illustrator, you can still get great benefits from looking into other directions of art, like photography or 3D or whatever. It always brings something new to the table that you can wire into your art. Yeah. So that's the video. Hope Fantastic. You Love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's go with the, with the work, right? Here you go. Yeah. So what I do um let's close this i create a new layer oh uh, below the line you see here is all the line mm -hmm. yes um here's the sketch but i can we cannot see it ah so, um i create a, a layer here and i press q and we have the special mask uh, you know, this uh, this is the special mask tool. Oh, you're masking uh, mode right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. we are going to mask. Which is also mode. which is also on the left in your tool panel at the bottom. There's this little button that you could click if you want to go in there. And then you he's just painting the mask in right now. It's not color. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are going to do it with a mask. I'm going to um, to do first the um, some some shadows, okay? Because uh, light without shadow wouldn't make much sense. So yeah, there there, there is no really there is no sh uh, no shadow without light and no light without shadow, really, right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. very that is deep. And Lucas says thank you for the super comprehensive answer. Luckily, there are many beautiful museums in Naples. That's good for you, yeah. Wow, yeah, Naples. That's a lucky luck. That guy good is good location to be an artist, I would think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Italy in general, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. I love uh, Venice, for example. I visit Venice three times. That is awesome. It's not too far away from you, too, right? It's a good place to Yeah, travel. yeah, yeah. In 2014, I worked in um, in industry industry. In, in Switzerland as, in, as an illustrator. Did you um, have to move there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it oh, was okay. less less than a year. But I I got the the chance to to visit a couple on a train and in five hours or six hours work. Oh. I was in in Italy in, in Milano. Yes. Yes. And it was amazing. Yeah, amazing it's a nice experience. place of the world. Totally. Yeah. So again, you're you said the light source will come from below in front of her underneath the water. So I'm um yeah, that's the thing. So since the light are, is coming from here, um I'm doing the shadows now. Yeah. Um so actually can... right now you're painting a selection for the shadows now, right? Because you're you're painting a mask. Right? 
Yeah, but if you want, we can. Can you repeat? Sorry. That, Sorry, um, I was. No, I what, think I was what I'm saying it's um, uh, what did you say? Can you repeat? I said right now you're pa actually painting in the selection for the shadows, not the shadow itself. Yeah, but it's the same thing because mm -hmm. now uh, we are going to do this. Um, uh, let me see. We press Q again, and then we go to go. selection uh, in invert. Okay. Mm -hmm. Invert here. And then we use the mask. All right. So that that's now it's an imp we have to um, we have to decide the color of the shadow. And this is another thing that it's interesting to to consider, since the the light is is a cold color because uh, this this guy here is blue. This is the god of the story. And oh, the god right. of the story has a special relationship with the character because the character she she's traveling through multiple universes and the god god gives her three special stones and each stone it's a different challenge and she oh, has cool. to to commit and and overcome three challenges to to be able to to travel with her own path so it's a, that is cool it's a, yeah it's a surreal story so it's actually anyway. not it's not her reflection in the water it's his face and his fingers and they're touching each other yeah she's like sitting on the water and oh. it, there is a special like you do. reflection yeah <laughs> i don't know it's a you know, on onerick piece anyway so since what i wanted to say is that we have a cold light, uh, light source yeah and if mm -hmm. we have a cold light the shadow has to be warm so I'm choosing this magenta for the for the shadow. We we can play like this or maybe multiply. Let's see. Ah. If I'm not super convinced, we always can do. Uh, That you see green layers, green yeah. doesn't work you see you can tell right. that green doesn't work but here here is something interesting yeah this magenta super super magenta this is what i wanted to this is what i wanted to to achieve all right so we have some shadow here but what is good of of the mask is that now I can I can modify all the selection how I want it. Yeah. So it's very very useful. Yeah, it's a great way to work. You can go back and forth without changing actually. Yeah. You don't, you're not painting in. You're just modifying the selection of it. Yeah, it's faster. Yeah, and like like you can see in the layer panel over there. Actually, the whole layer is filled. So if you would actually and release the mask, everything would be filled with that color. And mm -hmm. Nicolas has the possibility now to just paint in this this shadow wherever he wants. It's really cool. So. Mm. But there's a question from Caroline. She was like, "No, uh, does the shadow color come from opposite the color circle, or does that not matter as long as it's warm and cold?" Uh, ah, you mean the complementary color? Exactly. Yeah, it it is opposite for from the blue. The magenta. Yeah, yeah, magenta. It's the it's in the. We can go here again. Well, it's on this area too. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly super opposite, but. But you have a greenish blue, so it's more, yeah, yeah it's, it's right there. More here, it's here, you see. Yeah. But you can you can you can play with all this area and this in the composition we have now in the piece, because this area it's interesting since will be the um, the harmonic uh, color color scheme yeah. for for this piece. And um, I can I can show you something very quick. 
for example, now, um, maybe I can put this here. All right. So that will be interesting. All right. So for example, the, the skin. Let's go to the skin, 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 skin. Oh, what happened here? We will say that this is this is more close to the magenta, right? Mm -hmm. But if I we if we change it to skin, I guess. Mm -hmm. if we change it to something like uh, more jello. I like how you say yellow, you say jello, like it's something for dessert. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, sorry for my accent. <laughs> no, I love it. Don't apologize for your accent. It's lovely. Mm. This doesn't work. For me, it works. I like it. You like it. I, I, don't, I don't like it. <laughs> there you go. It's emotions. It is. Um, yeah. But here you can tell it's more harmonic. I agree. Right? This is very harmonic. Yeah. Yeah. It, the, 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 other, the other way looks like a retro style. It's like when the comics, right. uh, well, I know I can't do it because uh, I did the control C. <laughs> so you, you want to play with this, this type, um, this part of the color scheme. Yeah, and, and then obviously adding the the most uh, complementary color to the to the blue inside the color scheme if you want to do something really harmonic if you want mm -hmm. to do something different like for example if you want to express like uh, a disturb uh, super disturbing scene in your story where the character just discovered that he is uh, he has a super uh, strong disease and he's gonna die maybe you can play with something super, super doesn't have to be harmonic different. in that moment yeah yeah you don't feel very you harmonic. want to be disturbing there and then right. you play with those colors yeah everything has its time and place that's the whole thing so let's see let's see how we can Play with this. So, yeah. And you're really just using the default brushes of Photoshop. I always like to see that. Oh yeah, definitely. That's that's actually the fun part of the process, isn't it? Yeah. I love to do to do, this part of the process is very very fun to do and but yes and no because I'm very undersized it's it's hard to say goodbye to to a picture like when you spend some time well not this one because this is a fast one but, but it has, it? it's it's hard it's hard to say um okay this is done and this stop so sometimes you do this oh maybe I I'm adding a, a bright here. Oh, maybe I change that. Um, but uh, it's fun to do the, the shadows and lightings, but it's hard to say, okay, the, this, the piece is finished. Yes. That's, that's what is hard. Yeah. yeah, it's a tough decision to make. Yeah, it is. And I guess it's also more like a, a feeling that you get. Mm -hmm. It's a feeling, yeah, that's true. I think I'm done with that. I have to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And Caroline says, thanks. Uh, that's so interesting how color evoke an emotional response. Thank you very much for your answer. And oh, Michelle okay. says, I really like the color scheme here. Thank you. Thank you. And Tony has an uh, important uh, question for you. Have you signed up for Adobe Max yet? It's only just over a week away. Sign up and you can create your own schedule for all the sessions that you would like to see. So it's, it's, it's about time. And it's free. Oh, that's interesting. I will have a watch party at home. Mm. Mm. So actually the shadows, um, I like this. I like this, how it's working. 
because it yeah. adds some depth to the water. Yeah. So that's interesting. And you can see already that um, the mask with the multiply and the transparency works already with the colors behind. Um, below, below, sorry. Mm -hmm. Because this is different than this. So right. It's very fun to, to draw like this. And you have to actually, you have to be concentrated all the time. You just can't go on autopilot right here. There's a lot of thinking that goes into the process, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No time for uh, Netflix for sure. right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like to watch, well, it's not really watching. It's more like listening to it, some documentaries while I work. Yes, but, many but artists not, do that. Yeah, but not on this part of the process. Maybe when I'm inking it, mm -hmm. or maybe when I'm when I do the the plain colors the the in the beginning the first part of it but yeah I would think that inking is probably the one that where you can zone out the most and you can just use your yeah. muscle memory to do the work yeah but for sure not on the sketch part and not on the final part of the colors yeah everybody's already excited for Max Signed up and filled my schedule, says Oliver. Cool. I like that the schedule is available as an iCal URL, so you can add it to your calendar app and it syncs automatically. I like that too. It's very helpful. Everybody's looking forward to it. That's cool. And I know Tony has a lot of sessions. Do you, Tony? I have one. Three even. Wow, that's cool. You can change change the um, tolerance here of the magic magic wand. Ah, you just use the what did you use? It's the W magic wand. It's the magic like wand in English. Yeah. How do you call it in Spanish? Uh, varita magica. <laughs> magica, magic. Magica. So. <laughs> this is it. So in the end of the shadow, maybe oh, like this, I like to, to create gradients. It's more elegant. Yeah. That is beautiful. You see, already has some more atmosphere yes it does shadows, yeah. and you're also framing the pictures with the shadows around it you're really drawing the attention to the center by increasing That's the an contrast. Important. thank you thank you for that comment yeah it's true oh you're welcome <laughs> it's important, important it's amazing point. to to see an, an experienced artist you're doing so many things uh just by you know the mere experience and muscle memory and knowledge and that sometimes when someone asks you, it's even hard to describe. You just have all this. It's it's there. You know it. You know what to do. Yeah, it is. It is. It's true. Um, and sometimes it's very hard to explain. Um, I was um, I worked when I was twenty six as a teacher for a private school. Um, ah. And it was sometimes it, it was. It was hard actually to say right. stop, stop for a second and say, okay, who, who the hell I'm, I'm doing this? I, have to... I think teaching is the best experience for an experienced artist because you take your stuff to another level. If you can explain it, you really know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's a quote by Aristotle, actually. Yeah. Is it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a very important thing that Tony just says here. Don't forget that early Halloween game show this Friday in the UK stream. I, I have marked that in my calendar. I don't want to miss that. Who's, uh, who is it, Tony? Is it you and Maddie again? Yeah, it's going to be really, really creepy. I love Halloween. <laughs> is, it, is it big in, in uh, Germany as well? It's like not a America? it's not a thing here. I just like it, and uh, we don't people don't go from house to house and and share the candy or anything. But I just like the atmosphere, and I like the pumpkins and the sweets and the movies. Yeah, yes, yeah, Maddie and I bring your sunglasses. He says. <laughs> oh, 
awesome. <laughs> can, you, can you tell me how many minutes we have yet? Oh yeah, yeah, 15 minutes. Yet just 15, oh no. 15, yeah. Time flies okay. by, by when you're having fun. What I really like right now is how you are sculpting her body actually with the, with the shadow shapes. Yeah, that's the main thing of shadows and lighting. It's to create some, some volume. Obviously, this is not a technique of, um, for example, I, I really, I checked your work and it's beautiful how you describe your shapes with the black, just black and white. You know? Oh, the uh, portrait painting masterclass. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, this is not a technique like that, but um, it's like we have to create the illusion of the volume, maybe. Exactly. Um, You're telling the viewer what he's looking at by doing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lovely. Also, when I saw your work the first time, I thought you might be a great fan of uh, Möbius. Oh, yeah. That's you are, sure. right? Yes, there you are. Because we have yeah. a lot of people in chat who love his work. Who, who doesn't like my Möbius? Only the people who don't know him. <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer. The ignorance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, okay, let's do some lighting because I really want to, to show some lighting before, yes. before we finish. So it's actually the the same the same technique. I do the masking mm -hmm. too. Okay. And then it's sculpting the body as you as you say as you say before and there again you have to actually think about where's the light coming from how is that shape how does it work and where would the height light hit it right like there in her in her thigh like you painted it it wouldn't reach the lower thigh of, of her of her leg mm. yeah that's the thing and what i like about your work which also reminds me of of course, the, the woodblock prints from old Japanese artists, but also Mobius art. Your form shadows are have a hard edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it looks like um, the anime shadows, right? Yes, I like it. It's it's a mm. it's a very interesting style. You're not using any soft uh, edges for the shadows. I mean, you're working with gradients, but it's a different thing here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's what I say in the beginning. If I put so much emphasis on the volume I, and I create, oh, sorry for that. And I create like um, a gradient shadows that it's very roundy and, and describes the form perfectly. Since I already put so much emphasis on the line work, right. it's, it's going to be a mess. It's going to be muddy. Yeah, you have to control it. Mm. And Tony says, such great work. I love seeing what Nicholas is doing here and how this is really starting to leap from the screen. I agree. I think when the light comes in, it's going to be even more prominent. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. So let's focus for a second. What is the thing? This is the mobile screen lighting here. It's when you have your phone in your hand and it's uh, the light is yeah. <laughs> shining at your face. Looking at that little thumbnail there up in, in, in your navigator window, is, is, you can already tell how it works. It's lovely. The center of attention is right in front of her. All right, so. We have 10 more minutes and it's your chance in the chat to ask your questions now, all your burning questions. Okay. 
Okay, let's try like this. Uh oh, I forgot this um, selection. Okay. You know, you can do that later too when you click on the mask and you hit Command I. You can invert the mask that's already there. Oh, really? Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Ah, look at that. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm going to try to change. Come on, what is going on? And Stuart says, it's knowing how far you go with the light. Does it reach out to the outer objects? All those questions. I love it. So good. Someone's really intrigued by the process here. <sighs> Cool. You really switched the light on right just now. That's really cool. Sometimes I like to play with this. Yeah. See which this will be overlay. Overlay it's what mm -hmm. it's overlay my always works. Favorite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What works the most. Sometimes color dodge, but now it's a little bit annoying. I think overlay works better. Use some transparency. Wow, cool. Can you turn that on and off just to see the effect? Yeah. Look at that. It was so cool. Mm -hmm. yeah, we can continue. Michelle says, excellent work. Thank you. Mango says, yes, always good to get process insights. I agree. Uh, you are very welcome to to check the the comic. It's on webtoonfactory.com and yes. it's called the journey. Uh, but you also can find it if you check on the browser. My name, Nicolas Castel. Yeah, maybe Tony can uh, find that link and paste it in the chat. That would be cool. And we also have and it, uh, it's, it's free. It's a free yeah. At least it, the first three chapters are. Free. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. And we also have a Discord channel, so if you would like to sign up later, uh, Nicholas, oh yeah, definitely. You can know. always you can always uh, post new stuff of your work and keep us updated on what you're doing even after the stream. So everybody who's watching, of course, is free to sign up too. It's free, and you can stay in contact with us. Yes, I will do that. And Steve says, excellent piece. And Tony has an interesting comment. He says, it's interesting that Nicholas is using a regular layer filled with color rather than a solid color fill layer. Uh, not that it matters, it still looks great, but it's, yeah, it's interesting. You could actually, yeah, paint on the regular layer here and change the color if you like in, in some areas. Mm -hmm. And Tony found the link. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tony. Neptunefactory.com slash en slash series slash the journey. De nada, he says. <laughs> Beautiful. And actually, I think I will come here. This is poco a poco, step by step. <laughs> yes. How do you say a step by step uh, in Germany? In, step in Germany. In, 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 German, in German. Sometimes in Germany we also say step by step, but if we want to say it in German, it's Schritt für Schritt. Wow. Schritt für Schritt. <laughs> Schritt für Schritt. En français, c'est petit à petit. Ah, that's beautiful too. It sounds very lovely in most of the languages. Like uh, one example I think I saw was a hospital, l'hospital, l'hôpital. And in, yeah. German, in German, we say Krankenhaus. So. <laughs> <laughs> in Spanish, it's uh, the hospital. 
influencia? Eh, el hospital, el hospital. Almost the same. So I'm thinking that I like to create something extra like um, because this is very bright. So this is not a problem, but it doesn't give me so much space to play with an extra effect. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting if just here some gradient. Sandrine, Sandrine says pa a pa, but I'm not nitpicking there. Okay. She knows her. Pa a pa could be Polish, maybe. <laughs> And Yuma Corn says, oh, I'm late again. And she says, beautiful work. Uh, no worries. Uh, you can always watch the replay if you like and see how Nicholas built that whole thing from the, from the ground. And Luca has a question. May I ask how Nicholas discovered his specific illustration field in the industry? What does, what does he mean? Like uh, the niche or how I started or... Can you be a little bit more specific, please? Yeah, would you like to know if he, how he found his inspiration or how he found his market, you know, how he broke into the industry? Maybe you can tell about both. Mm, interesting. Um, well, obviously I, I, it was a decision because I wanted to, to live with uh, drawing and, mm. and doing, doing what I love, my pet my passion yes. um i i really wanted to to focus on that oh yeah Luca says, the, uh Luca sorry? meant the market oh the market yeah sure the market um it was interesting because um thanks to to five pictures that i that you can actually check on my behance portfolio that is called ukiyo e series mm -hmm. and i i think i uploaded that in 2016, I, I already was uh, uh, doing some professional work, but since then, um, the, the people like, loved that, um, that project and it was kind of a viral, viral project on Behance. And yeah. thanks to that, um, even today, people say to me, oh, we love this, uh, these pictures, we really want to do something like this with the Japanese atmosphere and maybe we can work together. And that is awesome. Like that. That's the perfect example on the work you put out will bring you the work you like. Yes. There and you go. I'm very, I'm very grateful for all the, the Adobe team on Behance and the support I, I had all these years. And it's always the, this guy, Oscar Ramos Orozco, that he, he sends an email and say, uh, your your work just ha had been featured on Behance or on Illustration, or, you know. Yes, yes. And and this it's seriously it's it helps the the artists a, a lot because uh, then your work uh, gets noticed and and you receive uh, some good offers and yes. it goes like this. Yeah, it can start your career. So you have one more minute, Nicholas, and. Oh, uh, one more minute. While you're drawing, I tell the people next Wednesday, same time uh, here on Adobe Live UK, we'll have a Photoshop battle, which is cool. But as Tony already mentioned, this Friday, we have the um, spooky Halloween quiz show coming up again with uh, Tim, Tony, and Maddie. So it's going to be ghoulish, and you don't want to miss out on that. <laughs> Tony already signed off. He says, I'm off back at, behind the curtains. <laughs> Lovely to see you all. Great stream. Uh, Nicolas, see you on Wednesday. See you on Wednesday. Sure. On Wednesday. Cool. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you. It was amazing. Your, your work is beautiful. And I like what you said on all your teachings. Very inspiring. And yeah, makes a 
makes me want to draw. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fantastic. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And there's a lot of nice feedback from the chat. Uh, Carolyn says, it looks fantastic. The lighting has really made it pop. Great work, says Angus. Thanks for the stream, says Vanessa. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Nicolas. Great stream. Uh, Steve says, thank you. Thank you for the great stream. Neat work, really. Man, they love you. Fantastic. I love you too. <laughs> Fantastical. <laughs> Fantastical. Si, si. Yeah, say something. Uh, your last words in Spanish, please. Eh, muchas gracias por tenerme. Ha sido realmente eh, una experiencia increíble y espero estar aquí invitado otra vez. I agree. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here, Nicolas. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Next stream on Wednesday. See you there. And everybody have a lovely week. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>